。大家好，那个这是我第一次在微信上面做讲座，所以不是太明白这个呃。procedure 的来龙去脉，嗯，倒是之前他们有发给我一条微信，讲了一些他们，嗯，今天大家比较想听到的一些信息，呃，第一行是希望我讲座用英语进行，那我接下来就用英语说啦。但是在开始之前，那个我,我还希望向大家呃道歉一下，那个今天本来呃最后希望我可以<咳>那个分享一下哈佛的校园生活。嗯，但是因为我最近因为在国内的做的演讲比较多，所以我赶上了那个叫做什么化脓性的扁桃体发炎，还蛮严重的。所以呢，嗯，我今天说话可能会比较少。然后呢，呃，最后比如说啊，哈佛生活这一块呢，我可以嗯、呃、别的时间再讲啊，或者因为大家都在湾区，相信身边的哈佛学生也不少，嗯、呃，听他们讲这些故事也可以。啊，所以今天主要我还是会讲一些关于辩论演讲的事情，请大家呃多包涵。All right, to start the presentation. Okay. Uh, so hi everyone. My name is Julia, and I am currently a rising sophomore at Harvard College. I came out of Gunn High School in the Bay Area, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with. Um. I, in terms of, so today I'm here to talk about speech and debate and why speech and debate I think has been one of the things that have helped me the most in my life and、um, one of the extracurriculars that I would recommend everybody at least try to partake in.、Uh, so today I'm going to be going through a couple of different things. First, I'm going to tell you what I consider a speech and debate, and then second of all, why I feel like you should learn speech and debate and some of my personal background. Background regarding the topic and how I think my personal experience with how debate has helped me in my life, and then lastly to share a little bit about how I、uh, became a confident debater and the kind of techniques and、um, my method of training myself to be a better speaker and a better、uh, debater. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I would like to talk about is what I consider speech and debate. So many of you might think of speech and debate as a very formal and rigid type of、uh, activity. It's where two people stand up on a stage, or, you know, one, two, or four, depending on the style that you do.、Uh, but a certain number of people go on stage and, using a lot of different rules, combat with each other. And discuss a certain resolution or topic of some kind. When I mention debate, you might immediately think of the National Forensics League and all the regional,、uh, qualifying, provincial, state level, and national tournaments that they host for speech and debate.、Uh, these are all very official, or like the various invitationals, for example, the Stanford Invitational, Harvard Invitational. These are all very official forms of debate, and that is one way to consider it. But that is not how I define debate.、Um, I think all of you should think about debate as something that you do on a daily basis, and something that can help you on a daily basis. At the core, debating is just actually about arguing. So anytime you've had an argument with somebody, you're actually just using all the mechanisms and skills that debate teaches you to proceed through that argument.、Uh, at a deeper level, it's about the art of persuasion. So it's about the ability to one layer down. It's more than just arguing, though. On a deeper level, debate is about persuasion, and it's about high-level persuasion because it's about understanding how a human being thinks, how they logically reason out certain conclusions, and how you can basically intercept that process to persuade a person from an inside out to believe in what you want them to believe. So on a deeper level, it is a mind control of sorts. Debate at its core is about understanding logic. Understanding human reasoning, and then being able to use that to make certain conclusions come out to be the conclusions that you want them to be. And pretty soon you're going to figure out that it's not just on the podium and on the stage that these kind of tools of analysis and、um, critical thinking abilities and fast reaction skills is not just. When you're in competition, that they become useful, but pretty soon they become interlaced in just the way you are and the way you behave and the way you treat others. And then you'll start to realize that、uh, many things in your life will go across much smoother. For example, any time you go into an interview, once I, you know, have done speech and debate for many years, it's extremely easy for me to analyze what it is that the interviewer is trying to ask me, and then I can use kind of my subtle persuasion skills to have the interview turn out the way I want it to be. 
Um, this even works on your parents. So for any of the kids who are listening to this, and I hope it is kids that are listening because I'm speaking in English. Um, but the, the skills you learn in speech and debate, they work on your parents as well. So if you need to negotiate like a later curfew, if you want to go out and hang out with your friends, if you want to go out later and enjoy time with your friends, uh, if you want a new car or if you want a whatever, whatever, you'll find that these very subtle persuasion abilities that debate and speech teach you uh, and how to present yourself will go a long way. Um, so I regularly use the kind of logical processes that I learned through debate to battle with my parents. So like very regularly, I'll have these discussions like, no, I would like to go on this beach trip with so-and-so because of X, Y, Z. Um, and like, more often than not, like nine times out of 10, the argument usually argument in quotation marks here. So like argument uh, usually turns out the way I want it to be. So uh, that leads me to the second part, which is why you should learn debate. Besides the benefits I just told you about, about like being able to actually thoroughly understand how people communicate each other, with each other and be able to understand how their mental processes work, there are some like very factual, like grounded reasons why you should learn debate. The first of which is your uh, increase in your writing abilities. Second is your speaking abilities. And lastly, your thinking abilities. So writing, um, because of the large amount of I think it's because of the extreme, like, logical clarity that debate dem demands of you. M most of us, like, most debaters I know don't have to study at all for most English social um, history exams, um, myself included. So I, I, like, never study for English. Uh, I barely study for history because I sometimes can't remember, like, the names or the dates or whatever. I never study for social um, these are just things that I just don't have to do. And so I spend most of my time, you know, studying math or something else. Um, but it will help your writing abilities tremendously. Uh, you'll, you'll find that once you learn speech and debate, just naturally a lot of things flow. Um, like, for example, the SAT essay that maybe is um, stumping a lot of you right now. Um, that was that's mo like that's no problem for most of us to do debate because. Uh, for us, 25 minutes is already way more than we have to prepare for a parley impromptu round. Like, most of us have 15 minutes to prepare for a round. Um, and the way we prepare for a debate is exactly the way you prepare for an essay. So you think of, you know, your three pillars or your three contentions that try to hit, like, attack most sides, all sides of an issue, and then you come up with an interlacing case line or theme that ties everything together, which is your thesis. And then you come up uh, with a title, like a conclusion and an ending that sound kind of good. Um, so essentially the 25 minutes you have to prepare for your SAT essay is like even more than what we usually have to prepare for a debate round. And the essay is usually just what we would say in a debate except written down on paper. So most of us don't have many issues when it comes to writing. Like I said, this also applies in school. So I don't study for English. I don't study for anything related to writing. Um, that also includes like AP level courses. You just don't. If you do speech and debate for an extended period of time, you will realize that you just really don't need to prepare for writing at all, um, including, like, the Harvard writing exam that they give you after you get in to kind of place you. It took me, like, they give you 72 hours to do that. I did mine in about six. So it will, like, tremendously help your writing ability. I can't stress that even more. Okay, next. So your thinking abilities. Um, this might sound kind of redundant, but debate is all about cognitive abilities. It, it's, like... It's half about, like, how well you speak, but most of it is just a mental battle, like mental jousting with the other opponent. It's essentially you give a reason and they give a counter reason, and then you find a loophole in their reasoning, and then you, you know, battle it back and forth. Um, but you also need, like, a sense of organization, sense of case structure, and this type of critical thinking skills that debate develops over time is extremely beneficial for you. Um, especially for those of you that do parley debate. Parley debate is um, more impromptu, and so it will test your brain even more because you're you are required to come up with a lot of contentions on the spot. And this type of thinking ability is exactly like, I don't want to have everything too college-based, but um, I do think that college demands a lot from you. And then one of the things that college really does demand from you is your ability to think on both sides of every story and to be able uh, to see both the contention, the gray areas, and uh, the places of analysis. Because you're going to learn in life that, um, the fun stuff doesn't happen in the black and white zones. So, like, what is fact and what is history is not really fun 
to do anything because there's nothing you can do with it. What is black is black. What is white is white. What is fun is the gray area. Uh, but if you can't see the gray area, which is what, you know, where all the analysis and all the mental jousting kind of happens, that you're missing out on a whole section of your cognitive uh, caliber. Debate lets you find that gray area uh, because as a debater, you always have to understand there's always a good and a bad to every story, and there's always a good and a bad to every contention. Uh, there's no such thing as a perfect case and a perfect argument. Uh, and your ability to go around that and find the loopholes, it's going to help you a lot when you both get to college and get outside of college, even in the workplace. You can find, like, loopholes in people's briefs and portfolios, for example. Uh, a one very factual example is uh, I... Also got into TASP, which I would consider is probably uh, one of the best, if not the best, writing program in the United States right now. And um, without my, like, critical thinking skills, I there was no way I would have gotten into TASP. Even in TASP right now, uh, or not right now, but when I was in TASP, that was one of the biggest skills that they tried to help us develop. Uh, basically, every day we would have around 50 to 80 pages of reading. But it wasn't the reading that we had to take notes on or anything. It was just reading to give us ideas and fuel for discussion. Because all we ever did in class was just talk and debate and argue and battle each other's um, ideas and opinions uh, so we could find our own reasoning for a lot of the ways of looking at the world. Critical thinking skills is not just something that they select during the process, but something that they help you train. And that's also why a lot of the graduates and TASP alums go on to, you know, very good colleges and go on to lead very successful careers because they have this capability. And lastly is speaking. This is kind of a duh thing. Like, so of course debate is going to help your speaking skills. Whether it's just, you know, actually being able to deliver something coherent or it's the manner and demeanor and the tone in which you conduct certain situations, all these subtleties you'll learn from debate. Pretty soon, when you get past the argumentation level as a debater, you'll move into, like, the tone and the nuance level, which is uh, very high-level debating. Um, at that level, it becomes just about, like, a person talking to another person. And so the speaking skills that you learn from debate will help you for sure, no matter what you do, no matter where you are for the rest of your life. So all three things tied together uh, – gives you one huge reason why you should learn debate, and that is it gives you self-advocacy skills. So self-advocacy means, like, you know how to fight for yourself, you know how to basically advocate for yourself and move yourself forward and achieve the things that you want to achieve. Without the thinking, writing, and speaking skills that you get from debate, uh, a lot of this is not possible, or it will get much harder. Even if you think, you know, oh, I want to be a biologist. Like, I don't care about talking in front of people or talking to people or, like, understanding how people think. I want to go study my stem cells. Um, well, long story short, you're going to have to publish a paper. You're going to have to write an abstract. You're going to have to formulate, which requires thinking skills, um, a topic or argumentation in your field that can get funding. And the way you get funding is you accurately can prescribe to other people and convince other people that your project or subject is worth their attention. And what do you know that it are all those are all speech and debate skills that I'm talking about. So even if you want to do something that, uh, in your opinion, is no way attached to talking and no way attached to being argumentative, I can guarantee that the skills you will learn from this extracurricular uh, will be beneficial to you regardless. So I can give another personal story for this. Uh, after I got into Harvard, I needed something else to do with my senior year because I got in early. So I had, you know, half a year just to wander around and do whatever I wanted. And I figured I really wanted to check out what venture capital was because I've always been big on startups. I've had four startups in the past, and I've been really curious about what it's like on the other side of the table. And so I managed to go to around 50 different pitch competitions and start to get to know the judges that were in the circle. Um, and slowly, I, you know, introduction upon introduction, I moved my way in the circles. Sorry. Uh, until I finally got my first uh, internship, like venture capital related internship at the Harvard Business School Alumni Angels, Northern California chapter. 
Uh, and then through there, I managed to get into a pitch event that, that introduced me to one of the partners of Formation 8, which ended up being the venture capital I used to work for, venture capital firm I used to work for. I really, really like them. They're one of my dream firms for a multitude of reasons. You can talk to me about that after, I guess. Um, but I really, really wanted to go work for that company. And uh, it was definitely my speech and digital skills that gave me that capability. So basically, I still remember that day where I went to the pitch competition. I went straight up to the founder. I, like, shook hands with him. Well, not founder, partner. I shook hands with him. I said, hi, I know what your name is. My name is so-and-so. I'm, you know, Harvard early, uh, graduate from Dunn High School in the Bay Area. And then I gave him, like, my 30-second self-advocacy pitch that I've honed over time because of, you know, the competitions I went to and because of speech and debate. And then he was just extremely impressed by the time I, you know, finished talking about why I was there, why he should like me, why he should help me, um, that he gave me, he gave me like a little, he asked me which of the companies that I saw that day, uh, or we saw that day I, he would invest in. And then I gave him my analysis of the one I thought he would invest in. And it turns out to be correct. He did invest in that one. So he gave me his business card and told me to go see him in his office the next day. And I went in at like 8 a.m. And then like by 3 p.m. he gave me the job. Um, none of this would have been possible had I not been able to present myself the way I wanted to and needed to be presented. Uh, none of this would have happened. And I could say that like that work experience has done a lot of things for me. It's made me grow. Um, he actually gave me an entire project to lead, so I learned a lot through that. It has also helped me with my venture capital kind of advancement at Harvard as well. Um, and so that that is one direct result you can see from the self-advocacy skills you learn in debate. And I, I just, for sure, I can see it spanning across. So that's what speech and debate is. Uh, in my in my understanding and that's why I think you should learn speech and debate and now I'm going to move on to the last part that I'll be talking about which is how I train myself as a speech and debater and like the different techniques and things I used if I wanted to get better I'd love to share that with you guys so debate is mostly two parts it's you have your knowledge base and then you have your skills uh, so knowledge base you have to build up over time um, that's, there's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> so you just have to read lots of things. Um, if you want me to give very factual examples, I can. Uh, so that includes, um, reading books that challenge you, uh, reading nonfiction books, reading books that span across different industries, reading books that are contemporary and like with the times, for example, right now, read about Bitcoin, um, stuff like that. Uh, but at the same time, you also have to understand kind of your general broad spectrum. And this is what I all, all consider knowledge. So your history, your econ, your international relations, your philosophy, your ethics, your rights. Um, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, your environmental cases, uh, your government scandal, your country backgrounds. These are all general areas of debate that all debaters should know and so you should try to go ahead and fulfill those knowledge areas at least give yourself like a basic understanding if time is tight for you if time is not tight for you please just go ahead and read all the read about these things they're really cool it's like nice to know about the world around you it's a fascinating place out there you're gonna learn a lot so please do read um in terms of knowledge which is one half of what debate is about you really can't get around that. There's no shortcut to it. Just read every day. Um, so besides just, uh, you know, nonfiction and novels or histories, uh, biographies and stuff like that, make sure you read the news. Um, that's something you have to do every day. Uh, so I personally, uh, on my phone, I like The Week. It's like a very short magazine because time is usually really tight for me. So I always read The Week. Um, it gives you like a very good summary of everything that's going on in the U.S. For Middle East, I read about Al Jazeera. Um, for China, I read Xin Wang Wang. Um, for, for your kind of left wing <laughs> propagandist, I read The Atlantic. Sometimes I read Foreign Policy, and then we all have to read The Economist, just because it's The Economist. Um, some good things I can recommend, uh, is Globe and Mail for your right wing stuff, uh, Guardian, and obviously New York Times. So these are all like good things you could, you know, just have on your phone, you can scan every once in a while. 
Um, make sure you're up to date on like the big current world issues. Uh, great. So that's about knowledge. Whether you get it from magazines or books or just paying attention to the newspaper around you, make sure you have some source of stable knowledge nutrition coming into you every day. And then you'll figure out that over time that kind of stuff will build. Uh, the second part of how I train is skills. So there's also a lot of very factual skills you can get from debate. Um, there is a lot of theory regarding like argumentation, um, regarding reputation, regarding the different style formats. So for example, if you're doing Parley, how to do a POI. Um, if you're doing Lincoln Douglas, like what is a critique, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, you can go ahead and just read up on that on the internet. The internet is super awesome nowadays. It just gives you everything. But the most important part of skills is practice. So there's also no way to get around this, which is just you just need to practice, like, a lot. So spend a lot of time debating. Spend a lot of time trying to practice the theories that you read on paper and put them in action, whether it's going to competitions, going to rounds, arguing with your brother or your dog or your goldfish. Like, find some way to practice these skills that you can learn on paper. You want to practice with people that are better than you. <laughs> uh, unless if you're very nervous and afraid of talking to people, then you can practice with your dog. But if you're not afraid to, like, talk to other people, you should practice with people who are better than you. And then just remember all the places that they beat you and use the same techniques the next time you go against them or go against someone else and see how they react. And it really is just about uh, a lot of practice over time that you can get much better. The third thing of which you can do to improve your skills is just to get a good coach. Uh, usually, if a coach sees you, they can give you, like, a pretty good learning curve, and that will save you a lot of time. As in, like, they'll watch you talk, and they know just, like, right away, okay, you need to work on your reputation. If this kind of logic building is weak. You need to go search up whatever, whatever. So if you find a good coach, that's also really good because he or she will save you a lot of time um, because they can tell immediately at what stage you're at and what you need to work on. At the end of the day, debate is actually highly trainable. Uh, so I've been debating since grade six, and I made it onto Team Canada in, like, I think, like, grade 10 or something. Somewhere around then. Um, I'm ranked seventh in the world for impromptu speaking, ranked, like, 20th, I think, for de- speech and for debate, for, par- for parliamentary debate, I think. That was a long time ago, so, like, you know, all high school years. Um... But something like that. So I've gone and I've, I've, you know, I've seen the international stage. I've seen a lot of the different teams that go around. Um, and it's really cool because if you look at the people who I met um, at internationals and while I was on Team Canada, they're all, like, really, really, I don't want to sound overly bureaucratic, but successful now. <laughs> like, they're all very, like, you know, at good colleges or, like, having lots of fun with their life, um, generally going to high places doing the things they love, reaching their dreams. So I don't even say that correlation doesn't equal causation and that it doesn't have to be speech and debate that made them this happy and successful, but, like, I'll bet you more than not that it, that it was. Like, it, it is indeed a skill that I think has uh, benefited me so, so much. At the end of the day, though, I found that it is highly trainable, as in that over these numerous years of debating, um, and I've... I think I found a system in which to train people, like, how to do debate. And it's super cool because I teamed up. So I was ranked seventh. I teamed up with the first uh, place speaker for speech and the first place speaker for debate. And we came up with, like, a curriculum that I currently think is, like, better than all the other curricula out there. Um, so I'm hyper excited. I really do think this speech and debate is one of the best things out there. Um, and I'm taking both the curriculum and the system. I'll be building... <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, sorry. I'll be building like a system, uh, a platform to help ki- teach kids speech and debate. So that's super cool. Um, I'm super excited because I'm partnering with some people here in China and I'm going to launch all over the mainland here in about uh, two or three months. And then the reason why I'm like launching here in China first is because there is just an overwhelming demand for speech and debate. I found that a lot of people really want to see uh, this kind of program get started up here and these opportunities be taught to these kids. And so I'm really, really sorry, that was a call. <laughs> uh, I, I've decided to take a leave of absence from Harvard, actually. Um, I haven't officially filed it in yet, but I'm probably going to file it in soon. I'm taking a leave of absence, uh, going to bring speech and debate to China. So that's going to be super cool. Um, 
if I see that there is also maybe interest in the Bay Area or if there's interest in the U.S. since I'm working on an online platform, it'll be super easy for me to come back and, like, share the stuff that I've learned over time with the people here as well. Um, so I think that essentially concludes what I wanted to talk about today. I hope I've given an introduction to what speech and debate is and at least half tried to convince you that this is a worthy endeavor and uh, a pursuit that will be very fruitful to you throughout your entire life. And um, I know usually afterwards there's some kind of presentation and stuff like that. And I know people wanted me to talk about, like, Harvard and how Harvard was. Um, and, I mean, like, Harvard is great. I'm just going to do, like, a simple summary because I, I I feel like there's probably a lot of kids who get into Harvard, and I'm sure you guys all know somebody that got into Harvard. So you can all ask them about their personal experiences. But my experience is that I really do love the school. Uh, it fits my personality. It fits who I am. It's the first time in my life that I felt like I've been at home. Um, it's a place of, like, hopes and dreams, and it's a place where I think the only thing that's impossible for you is to dream things, not to do things. So if you can dream it, you can do it. The only reason why you can't do it is because you haven't thought of it yet. <laughs> I actually do believe that it's a place like that. Um Granted, I can only speak for Harvard because, I mean, I go to Harvard. I applied to Harvard early. I'm obviously very biased towards the school. All the top schools, I'm sure, are the same. And they provide, you know, very good calibers of education. And they all have their strengths and weaknesses. And I'm sure each of you belong to a different school because of who you are. Um, you wouldn't be happy at a, you wouldn't be happy at a school that doesn't fit you. And a school that doesn't appreciate you for your personality, for your uniqueness, and for the things that you want to do. So, um, for all those kids out there, please do, when it comes to college application season, uh, please, please don't, don't be too pressured. It's, at the end of the day, it'll all work out. Like, it'll all make sense. Like, you'll go to the place that you'll be the most happy. It really does work out that way. Um, and please don't learn speech and debate for college. Like, I mean, it, it does look really good because it shows that you're, like, a good candidate and, like, whatever. Um, but you should do it for yourself. Do it for um, learning this transferable skill that you're going to have and appreciate and it's going to help you for the rest of your life. Do it for that, for self-improvement and not for getting into college. Great. So I'd like to end off with that. And um, if anybody has any questions, I would love to answer them. Uh, uh, 呃，辩论对于我来说是一个呃，帮助了我很多的一个技能。它应该说是有史以来，我觉得对我帮助最大的一项课外活动。我是从六年级开始就练习辩论，然后练习了这么多年，我真的感觉我的人生其实是随着它慢慢的变的。嗯，它辩论最主要是教你三方面的技能，它是你你的写作、你的说和你的思考方式。都会因为辩论而所改变。呃，这三项都是我觉得孩子是一生必备的一些技能，而且他们是这些技能是越好，他们以后不管从事任何行业，想做任何事情，想成想成就任何梦想，他们都是需要的三个必备的技能。呃，写作呢，我是从来不需要为任何英语或者 history 课复习。呃，嗯，说话呢，我。也就是如如鱼得水，可以这样说，就是平时不会怯场，呃，而且因此给了我很多的自信，嗯、呃，我不怕站出来，我不怕去竞选，因为我对我自己说话的呃很有自信，嗯、呃，这种自信是可以给孩子带来一生的快乐的。然后最后他的思维方式，就是其实辩论是一件很容易让你成熟的一件事情，它可以让你呃多元化的去考虑一个问题，呃，这种思想方式。不光是对他成长、对他考取大学，甚至以后工作上面会有帮助，而是有助于他一生做出的所有的选择的时候，他都有这个技能在他后面为他撑腰。所以对于我来说，辩论真的是我觉得有助于我一生啊、呃，非常非常大的一件事情啊、呃，我非常感激我从小就选择了这一件项目啊、呃，一直伴随着我成长。然后最后呢，我就给大家分享了一下那个我学我学辩论的方式。一部分呢是永远不要停止鼓励孩子去读书，他需要每天必须得看新闻。就是我的手机上面一开机是自动会跟我把我所有的我按时订的那种报纸会直通通信给我。我电。
，比如说《纽约时报》、呃《经济时报》，然后呢，嗯，我最个人很喜欢一个叫做《The Week》newspaper， 会自动的，嗯，会在我的 tab 上面摆着，等着我去读。其实每天就是十五到二十分钟的时间，然后呢，你会发现长期日积月累下来呢，它的知识面会广很多。那第二部分呢，就是练习。它需要大部分大部分练习。我这个地方会强烈的鼓励家长不要以得名次来那个给孩子压力啊、嗯，你要尽量的去鼓励他去参加各种的演讲比赛和辩论比赛，而且是不得呃那种故意拿奖为目的性，就是他去那的时候就是为了成长，为了练习啊、呃。他去外面站出来说话说的越多，他以后的嗯。呃纪念就会越强，这件事情跟他拿拿不拿奖没有一点关系，所以呢，希望家长可以多鼓励孩子出去。好，这个时候要是大家有任何问题的话啊，我啊可以轻松的回答，谢谢。Hi Anne, thanks for your question. No, I don't write anything down when I um read the stuff, like read newspapers and stuff like that. Um, I I can understand why you would ask this question. Uh, and I would strongly discourage you to, to I guess. Impose any sort of system of reflection on your children,、um, because after a while it becomes my habit and it becomes something I love to do. So every morning I really like reading the news because I can follow、um, things that have been happening before. So,、um, but this varies by child. So, for example, if your kid likes to take notes while he reads the newspaper, then that's his style. I would encourage you to like have your children experiment and see what way. Um, they best like to、um, approach this topic. I understand that it's probably because you want your child to retain the information, and so you would like them to write it down. But if you use this method, it'll make it seem like it will make it seem like it seem and feel like it is homework. In which case, then it won't be fun. And if it won't be fun, then he there's like there, there's no point because at the end of the day, what you want to develop is. You want your child to develop the ability to care about these issues intrinsically, and have and and to be honest, all the best debaters, like the ones who eventually win awards and stuff like that, are the people who actually love、um, international affairs and just love reading about world news and understanding about the world a bit more. And so, I would encourage you to、um, help your child develop these sort of interests using whatever method、uh, is most easy for your child. So, if your child likes taking notes, then sure. But if they don't like writing things down, don't make them write things down because then they're going to hate debate. Hi, Jamie.、Uh, thanks for your question. I think it depends on what you want your child to learn debate for.、Um, if you want them to learn debate to get an award so they can get to college, then it's probably too late to start in high school because you're going to be going up against kids like essentially like me who have been doing this since grade six, right?、Um, but if you want your child to benefit from this trait as Like a long-term life skill, then no, I don't think it's too late to start. In fact, I think high school, high school is probably one of the best times to encourage an activity like this,、um, because I think you'll find、uh, your child is going to go through a lot of emotional distress in high school.、Um, they're going to have to experience and figure out a lot of things. A lot of things related to, you know, their identity and maybe philosophy for the first time. They're trying to develop what they think is their own moral code, and so th- these kind of stuff debate can help them with. It can help them sort out their emotions, help them, you know, reason things out, and it can definitely help them with their studies. So I don't think it's late at all to start in high school. I think the、um, the techniques that debate teaches you, just in terms of, you know, logic or organization, is enough to help them with, for example, their SAT essay. Or、uh, their normal essays in class. Hi, Jamie. So follow up on your question.、Um, if they don't show any interest at all, like if they don't really, really don't like it at all, I don't think you should pressure them into doing speech and debate. But I do think you can try to encourage them、uh, to like the art. And、um, one of the ways is to find a good teacher. If you find a good coach, they will make debate fun and interesting、um, in a way that your child will probably want to take the classes from then on. Hi Susan， 看需求吧。要是大家觉得有这方面的兴趣，然后呢，有足够的小朋友啊想一起过来试一试的话，那我肯定可以在硅谷拜拜，没有问题。我们在湾区本来已经有自己的会所了，所以呢也很容易。Hello， 那个啊，这位家长 A， 嗯<笑>、um, ，我我现在就说实话吧，就是我们湾区呃稍微好一点的，应该就是 Palo Alto High School 的辩论队。嗯、um, ，但是除此之外呢，还真的就是
没有没有那种一流水平的呃那种教练啊，然后队伍，嗯，这也是为什么我硬要出来做这件事情的原因，因为我觉得我们其实这个地方还蛮缺这方面的资源的，就是他呃，如果你从辩论从宏观性的角度来看他的话，他的整个体系。其实是可以 break down， 可以 train 的，但是很多这方面的资源，很多这方面的教程，很多这方面的那种经历，大部分的辩论学校都是没有的，而且大部分的辩论 coach 也是没有受过这种训练的。啊、um, ，我甚至在湾区看到了很多 coach， 他们自己连全全世界的比赛都没有去过，就说他们其实是没有这方面的资格来培训孩子，所以这方面很很可惜。嗯、um, ，但是这也是为什么要出来。那个，嗯、um, ， second in。Hi Jimmy， 我们现在正在办我们的网络平台。现在我有一些北京人在帮我做我的后台和我的 APP。然后呢，这个大概十月份的时候呢，就嗯会有一点头绪了。嗯，这个时候如果我需要拉钱的话，我会再找别人过来赞助。然后呢，嗯，这平台应该很快就会出来了。然后是 ，I am definitely recruiting more kids with the same passion as I am。就说我个人特别特别喜欢小孩子。然后呢，嗯。哎，反正就比我低两岁，我也当做是小孩子了。他们特别喜欢帮他们成就他们自己的梦想，然后呢，帮他们达到他们自己想达到的事情。所以呢，只要是旁边我看到了，比如说有这方面兴趣爱好、有领导能力、想站出来的，一块帮我这些孩子，大家就欢迎多推荐啊！我总是希望能够找到更多这样子的小孩，我会带着他们一块创业，然后呢，帮他们一块实现他们自己的梦想，这是没有问题的。嗯，包括我现在在硅谷，我现在我在硅谷呢，在 Palo Alto， 在 San Antonio 和 El Camino 交界那个地方，我们有一个会所，那个是我专门用来培养、专门用来培养孩子的领导的那个创造能力的一个会所。然后那里面我全年会办 Speech and Debate Classes。嗯。我现在用的不是我这个最新的教程，所以呢，但是我会把这最新教程引进进来。嗯，这个里面呢其实是个空的 structure， 所以呢，我故意把它设为一个空的 structure， 就是我在期待着这些有 passion 的孩子来，他们来的时候我就直接把这些职位就给他们，比如说什么什么 captain， 什么什么 captain， 谁的 leader， 什么的 president， 就这些东西让他们来做，因为我希望呃更多湾区的孩子可以培养一些领导能力出来。艾平你好。嗯、um, ，很抱歉听到这种情况发生，的确是有。嗯、um, ，因为他裁那个什么辩论的过程当中呢，他嗯， um, 你真的裁判真的是很难时刻辨别什么是真，什么是假，所以这还是锻炼了一个你有你的说服性。嗯、um, ，但是呢，这方面是有对策的，就是说他现在应该是在做 policy debate 吧 ，policy 对 resource 比较看重。那其实这个时候呢，在 cross examination 的过程当中，可以就死问这个人。就直接就是说是哪一个地方出来的报纸，哪一个周刊，哪一页，你给我说出来记者是谁，然后记管什么。就如果你对他真的有怀疑的话，可以用这种方法把他给突破。如果对他啊、嗯、不愿意用这层方面的话，还有别的技巧可以去缓解这个情况发生。嗯，我很心灰，听到这种事情会让你的儿子对对他嗯对辩论这个项目不是那么感兴趣。呃，艾平，你应该跟你的儿子讲一下，说嗯。任何事业上面都是有不公平的事情，这些人用不规矩的手段做出不公平的事情，得到的也不是一个真理啊，得到的赢也不是公平，也不是正义，而且也没有什么好炫耀的。他自己心里面有愧，只要是他做出来的事情，他上台去领奖的时候，他自己心里知道啊。你要鼓励你的儿子，要去做到他能够做到的最好的。就是说，要是这个人他有一个 resource 有 evidence 的话，那你儿子下次上场的时候也要准备一个 resource evidence， 就是说，不要准备的更充足就可以了。嗯，下次的时候用别的技巧也可以同样打败他。嗯，我们辩论永远不可能输在一件 evidence 或一件 resource 上面的，肯定有其他的方面，你儿子同样也是可以进步的。这些事情只要是他喜欢，你一定要鼓励他，不要让他放弃，要告诉他不公平是存在的，但这就是更是为什么他需要坚持。他需要在那里，就是因为这些不把规矩放在眼里面，而且呃 ，basically corruption 的这种根源才是他坚持下去的理由。他甚至应该有一种责任心，用他的公平和正确的手段，要去呃为 justice 做点什么事情。这就是他可以做的方法，坚持下去，然后呢，坚持直到打败他为止。我不知道我说清楚没有，但是就是要去鼓励你儿子，要要告诉他这个道理，就是说，嗯，我们好人不能被坏人挤出来啊，是不是？就是要是他真的是在 cheating， 真的是在作弊的话，那你就应该用你最 fair 的手段去打败他啊、嗯，因为我们不能让最耿直、最 fair 的人都离开这个系统，那最后这个系统
，还是什么呢？呃，哎，你好，那个我们的网站现在正在维修。因为我呃上次我们我一月份的时候在加拿大开过一期，然后呢，嗯，对我们的教程有所更改，所以我希望他们先把它给撤下来，等我把我们的教程那个嗯重新登上去以后，再把它 go public。MS 你好，呃，我现在还没有正式的在硅谷开始招生，呃，如果大家有足够的兴趣的话，那我可以开班啊，嗯，如果要开班的话，那就是呃小学和小学以下的学生是一组，然后呢初高中生会是一组，这两组是要分开的啊。但是除了这个年龄的分割以外，没有太多其他的需求，然后也不需要经验，因为呢当学生来的时候，我会自动按他们的经验跟他们分组，所以这也应该不是太大的问题。你你好，我当时是在加加拿大的卡尔加里 ，so Calgary in Alberta 开班的。艾萍你好，没事。哦，他是 Public Forum， 其实 Public Forum 对证据的那个依赖性不是超级强，所以我想那几个裁判可能是也没有受过太多的训练。但是呢，你又可以多鼓励他，你在 Public Forum 上面你拿多项的证据，会比他一个证据会更有用一些，而且他的逻辑思维要是很呃很 solid 的话，他。这方面也会占占优势，没关系，多鼓励他。Hi X Z， 嗯，这要看你说的是哪一个 international tournament 啦。但是大部分的国际性的比赛的话，它都是要节节塞散上去的。就是说，我们现在，嗯，美国最 popular 就是 NFL 啦，但是 NFL 它也只是一个 national tournament， 不是 internationals。我去的那几个，嗯，都是。嗯、um, ，从 regionals 再到 provincial 再到 state， 然后最后 select 到 team 上面去，就是国家队上去以后，然后代表国家队就参加国际比赛。艾萍你好，不是，嗯、呃，要看比赛。我知道每年加拿大会举办一个叫做 internationals independent 的这个比赛，这个是，嗯，只要是你来自一个私立学校，你不用按照学校的名字，你可以单独一个人就个人报就可以。